Yeah, you know because for him to do that at such a, a young age and Man. really, because like, you know, where I was going to go with it, most people, they, they, they feel we got to come into the game and we got to talk about guns. We got to talk about the streets. We got to quote unquote, keep it real. So for him to have the presence of mind to be like, nah, like that ain't the way we need to break into this game. Like it, it, even if we doing it out here, it's still another way to do it, and we can reach a bigger audience. I, I th that's, you know, he. It's I majority. understand. It really is. Like what he you, an what artist. Do what do you want out of this business? This all is about. This is what you want out of it. Do you want to do in clubs the rest of your life? You want to do arenas? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? Do you just want to sell for your fans at the crib? How do you want to do it? Because you can do it. You know what I'm saying? But content is everything. So what you talking about going to get you to the levels that you talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like you just not being able to do arenas off of uh shooting people and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that <laughs> too. Believe that started with probably who? I don't know. I guess Jesus and Rick Ross probably the first ones to be able to do top arenas like that. You know what I'm saying? NWA of course, but like you said NWA said both sides of it. They was explaining the hood. And letting you know how it was in LA. They wasn't necessarily always saying, I'm gonna shoot you in the head, mother. They ain't really go there. They was telling stories. The boys in the hood was always hard. Ice Cube was a storyteller. You know what I'm saying? He wrote them lyrics. So we got to see the difference between saying, I did something and saying, this is what's going on. See, hip hop started with, this is what's going on. And the only thing I did was kill you in this rap. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I killed you with these bars. Now it's saying, now it's like, this is what I did last night. This is what I did. And this is how we do it. And no, bro, you snitched on your whole click that fast. Like, stop it. Don't say <laughs> this. I don't do that. <laughs> say this is what's going on in your neighborhood <laughs> or, your, or your West Coast. Otherwise, the boys coming after you. Because nah, everybody ain't rapping. Arab, some people are literally still in this thing and they just trying to get out or they trying to be around you to get out. But they still in it. And you talking about it. And now I'm looking at all y'all. So now your friends getting caught up. You wondering why they going to jail on accident. Like, no, you said it in the rhyme. Now they didn't pick you up, but you've been saying it. And now they know who the 44th Street people are now. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to watch it. We just got to watch it. No, nah, you absolutely right. You absolutely right. You, you, question for you. You speak on how prolific and how cold Ali is as as a lyricist. Why why did he first start out kind of on the business side? Why why not you know start out and make a group around himself or try to go solo? Because he, he wasn't originally in nah, the group. He was he was no nah, he was a solo artist. He was an artist too, uh, but he managed us too. You know what I'm saying? He didn't get in. The, he got in the group in like '96 when our partner who was Nangoldi who was in the group he left to the other side of town and start using drugs and now he's um, deceased over that stuff. But Ali came in the group then. He left, he he said, I'm gonna step down as manager. I'm gonna be the fifth member. Oh, got it, got it. Uh, yeah, cause you know, obviously you think highly of him as you should. I mean, the, the boy got words, but I always looked at him, you know, as, as the business mind. So it's it's interesting that he he I didn't what I didn't know is that he was a solo artist at the same time he was managing the group. Yeah, he started out when he was getting all the stuff together. We was doing we was trying to find it all. Like I said, the other label was Bulletproof Records. Shout out to them, I love them. They had like two groups. They had three solo artists, a singer, two producers. You feel what I'm saying? Like that's how that's how Ali and Love and and Keith was thinking. They was thinking like, man, we got Ali, we got a group. Shoot, somebody else gonna come. Right if this gonna lead to another person rapping, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna lead to more, so we can have a whole camp of stuff. It, it was definitely thinking Wu Tang and thinking, you know what I'm saying, in that nature because they was big Wu fans and mm -hmm. Puff and, and Biggie and kind of how. Uh, Dungeon Family did it. You see how Dungeon Family had so many groups in one, but it was still Dungeon Family. He was trying to do that more so, you know what I'm saying? And out of that, he ended up having to be in the group, which made sense too, though, because he was so us. 
it was also part of it. It was just right. But he was def- definitely leading us. I can't, I don't want nobody to, to not know that. You know what I'm saying? You got to know that, like, he was leading. He was literally, a lot of times, you just got to be around and be in to soak it up. You know what I'm saying? But he was a thinker, and he was, and he knew them records, man. Had a basement. His daddy had a basement full of records. He knew what the sample. He just knew. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he been here before, and it was just, I'm, that's why I talk highly of him because I'm thankful because I could have been something else, and I'm I'm glad I'm what I am. Yeah, and I probably yeah. wouldn't even steer that direction if it wasn't for him. You know what I'm saying? He made it all feel like there's another level to this. We can get paid from this, y'all. Not just rapping in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Like we can, we cool with selling out the trunk. That's dope. That's the biggest thing ever. You can make a lot of money, but he saw the next level. Like, nah, we can be on on. You know what I'm saying? What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.